All right, welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. If you see another face on here, guys, that's Doug. Hey, Doug. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, this gentleman from uh, Canada we're going to be talking to today. But real quick, wanted to uh, let you guys know a little bit about the updates with um, uh, PacWest Bigfoot. Got some interviews here today with Doug. Going to put this out here tomorrow for you. Um, and you're watching it now, so. Mm. <laughs> um, also got some other interviews coming up uh, throughout the rest of the summer for us here. Also, real quick, uh, Robin Hyatt, um, and I'm going to share uh, a link with you guys, creates these awesome little greeting cards, and she's decided to give us a, a couple little uh, batches with a couple, two, three cards in there uh, to give away next month. And the Southern California Sasquatch Organization, good friends of mine down there, have given us one of their little little team member shirts that you guys can have and so I'm going to give those away next month for the giveaway. September I've got something absolutely cool some more cards from Robin and I have a book called Oregon Bigfoot Highway right behind me now but we'll save that for then. Um, anything else uh, if you guys want to um, I've got uh, um, everything's open and available over at mypackwestbigfoot.com. Matter of fact, a lot of you guys have been sending me pictures with your uh, coffee mugs like this one and hats and whatnot. Thank you guys so very much. Like I said, the content is always free here. The interviews, um, listening to my son cry in the background, um, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is awesome and free. Uh, so <laughs> he's three. <laughs> um, yes, I have a three-year-old. Uh, so yeah, all the content is always free. Basically, getting a T-shirt, getting a coffee mug, getting a hat, or whatever. Um, my goodness, he is just off the hook. Uh, those things kind of help us get, help us uh, continue everything here. So, with that, what I want to do is introduce uh, uh, Doug here real quick. And Doug has um, some really cool experiences himself um, up in uh, Vancouver area, I believe. Yeah, just also outside Vancouver, actually, yes. Okay, and some experiences from some other friends of his that he'd like to share with us today for the next half hour, 45 minutes. So let's dive into this real quick, Doug. Go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, where you're from and just lead us right into, you know, be be specific. Tell us what you were doing at those times. you find the evidence or you, you had the experiences? would love to just kind of dive into the woods with you, okay? Sounds cool. Awesome. Well, I um I originally was living in uh, Eastern Canada when I was a little a little boy, or, so I moved out from Eastern Canada to the West Coast, ne not knowing anything about this you know Bigfoot Sasquatch stuff. So I moved out to a place called uh, Lake Huron, which is out of Vancouver in the Fraser Valley. Right? It's three or four miles uh, away from uh, some major native reserves. Uh, the hotel hotel just three three or four miles down the well. It's called the Sasquatch Inn, so it kind of tells you it's been a very squatchy area. I love that place, man. I saw pictures of it. <laughs> it's the real deal. I'm not kidding. I it's love the real, that. I would it's love It's the to real stay deal. So I was, I was, I'm living three miles away. So as a little kid, I seen these these images of this Sasquatch, and I thought, where, where am I? I mean, I'm like 10 years old, and this is terrifying. You know, seeing like they, they live out here, and the native. And I went to school with a lot of native kids, and they were saying, oh yeah, they're telling me stories of their uncle and their dad seeing these things up in Chehalis. Even the, the, the native band, the Chehalis, their emblem is a Sasquatch walking, looking back, something like the Patterson Gimlin film. Oh, wow. Okay. It's pretty unique. So the, and the other ones were the Scarlet Natives that I went to school with, but just getting into it. So I lived there for uh, for about three or four years. And uh, I mean, we heard things. That, that apparently there was a bus that seen one run across the road. But after that, what happens, there was a lot of, a lot of uh, fake sightings there was a guy you know he was making prints and going across the road with them so it got kind of blown out of proportion so it, it, it kind of it somewhat tainted that whole bigfoot thing around that area and this was about i'd say about the mid later 70s so um i moved to uh, a larger town which is a town because i was living in a village and uh, i ran into a, a buddy of mine i went to school with i found out he used to live in harrison hot springs now, Harrison Hot Springs is a very famous place. I mean, John Green used to live there. Rennie de Hinden, that little bushman that was, you know, the Norwegian or whatever he was, he was, he was in that area. So, um, and then my friend's father was the, was the mayor of the village. So, and he told me things that were crazy. Like when I, we were little kids, 
I bought the same time about the John Green paperback books and looked through them and that. And then he tells me that, oh yeah, he said, you know, but John Green was our neighbor. We used to take care of his cats when John Green would go on his little expeditions. But we all know John Green was, was better at writing books than he was going out in the field. Now, Rene de Hinden, on the other hand, was different. He was, he was right on Bushman. He'd go right out there. Because my father's, my father's friend, being the mayor, he would basically go camping trips with Rene de Hinden on, a, on these float planes. So, it, and my father's friend told me a story when he was the mayor at this small village of going outside of his, his cedar hedges and seeing something that was passing by the hedges. His hedges were six feet. This thing was here, was over six feet. All he could see was a, a cylinder cone go, go around and grunting around his hedges. He said to me, you know, Doug, I'm not. I, I stood for, on my porch. I watched this thing walk around my hedge, and I'm not going out there. And that wasn't a bear. So, you know, brief things happen a lot in this village. Just the strange, strange things in that. So, you know, we kind of grew up in that area just hearing about these. So later on, um, I started to get into uh, a lot of mountain biking when I was uh, uh, in my early, later, later teens. And I went to a place called Hector Ferguson Lake, which is up by Golden Ears. Golden Ears is strictly a, a provincial park, which is just outside of the city limits. But it's pretty much chocker block for so you go, You could head up there and you could hit Alaska or, or North Pole. There ain't nothing. So I was going up to a lake, Hector Ferguson, which was about, uh, ooh, I want to say about 10 miles. So I was, it was, I, I, I went on my mountain bike. So I'm, I'm going up the trail on my mountain bike, but I'm noticing I'm getting off my bike. It's about October. It's kind of cooler. So I wanted to make some time because the sun's going down. So I kept getting off my bike, taking, you know, dragging these limbs, these branches off the trail. And this happened about 10 or 15 times. I said, this is getting me a little out of hand here. And I'm noticing the branches, they're not chopped by an ax or, or anything. They're ripped off. So, and it gets to a point, I look at the time, it's getting too late. I'm not going to make the light. You know, like by the time I get back, it's going to be dark. I didn't have any lights on my bike. And, uh, you know, this is foolish thinking. So I figured, well, okay, I'm going to pull over here, have some water. So midway, probably three quarters of the way, I just, you know, do a little scouting around. I noticed some structures. The weirdest thing, I, I didn't even think about it. There's a structure and it looks somewhat of a lean-to, but everything is, is not chopped by an ax. It's ripped. And, and I'm looking around and, the, you know, the birds are singing. I'm sitting down having my granola bar, kicking back. And then suddenly, everything just goes silent. And I get this, I don't know if you've had this, this gut feeling. Something's not right here. Something is not right. It's just, why are these birds stop singing? So I'm sitting there, I'm looking. So I see two fir trees. They're about 10 feet away from each other. And they're somewhat 10, 15 foot saplings. And they're moving. And the other one's moving. It's, it seems to be about 8 to 10 feet away. And like, they're both moving and they're shaking. I'm hearing something in the bushes. Then I look... So I started moving away, and then I, while I'm moving away, I almost stepped on it. It looked like a nest. It was ferns that were uprooted, and they were packed around a large area near where the structure was. And it looked like, like a large, large nest, and I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> so, and just with well, whatever is moving in the bushes and the sounds, I thought, you know, flight or fight? I just got on my bike, I never turned around, and I just bolted it down that trail mm. because luckily I moved all the debris off the trail earlier. So it literally scared the hell out of me, and I, I never went back there. That place just, just gave me the creeps later on. And, and even later on watching YouTube stuff, I found out that, you know what, I don't know if what I found, but to me, I seemed to find some kind of encampment or something. It seemed like to me, I could be wrong, but you know, when you're young, you just, you, you yeah, there's, there's a couple places up here in uh, Southern Oregon. They're a little bit creepy. Um, most people that go to Crater Lake find it awe inspiring and just beautiful. But at the same time, they feel like it's like, it's just, mm. so, it was a volcano. It just came in on itself. And it's just, it's just so, you just, you get this weird feeling like this. Even the Native Americans there say that. Um, I'll be interviewing some of the um, Klamath Indians, uh, family members, uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. And uh, they talk about that a little bit. Like, it's, mm. it's a very heavy place. 
Mm-hmm. We so, talked about that. Yeah. I know I've been in Crater Lake uh, four years ago, five years ago now, and mm-hmm. I I looked at my wife and I said, and she even said to me, I don't feel right here. Then I go along to read the, the missing 411 books. Well, I can see why now. There's, there is something diff- different about that area. There's um, quite a few over the years, over the last few decades or so, of people gone missing up in that area. And it's uh, a lot of it actually, a few, quite a few of them go unreported. I mean, it's just not mm-hmm. a huge thing, I guess, or something. But, yeah. you know, all we end up with is like, you know, pictures on telephone poles. And that's exactly. About it. So. So, so later on, I, I, I went on to do my own little trekking around and everything like that. But uh, a friend of mine has a sailboat on here, so like, his father did pass away, who was the mayor. We became very good friends as adult friends. We still see each other. He's got a sailboat on Harrison Lake. So we went up to um, Island 22. This was two years ago in October. This, I mean, I was, I've been hooked since then. Um, we pulled the boat up. Island 22, there's a bay. And uh, there's a, a, kind of a logging camp. But what there is is there's a night watchman. He's there with his dog. He watches the camp out of, out of season. This was mm-hmm. November. There was no, no snow or nothing. Very, very nice, beautiful night. That dog barked the whole time we came up. We pulled his McGregor sailboat out because it's got a dagger board, so you can kind of pull it on the shore. It's about a 20-footer. Mm-hmm. We made a big fire. The dog was barking, but as soon as that sun went down, that dog never made a peep. It was so <laughs> quiet, okay? Uh, it was, it was kind of strange. Yeah. So we're sitting there. We got the fire going. I got the Ron Moorhead uh, CDs that I purchased. Mm-hmm. So we got the Bluetooth on there. I just We're, met him a week and a half ago up at Beach wow. It was pretty Love cool. To, He's a really nice to. guy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we we um, put the Ron and Moorhead recordings on just to see if we get any reaction. And my friends, he's got bigger lungs than me, so he's howling up the mountain. And we're sitting back, and wouldn't you know, we heard this two horrific sounds coming from the mountain that literally scared the heck out of us we got to the point and i'm not kidding i have never heard anything like this it was just screeching it almost sounded like a woman in distress but it was like my friend was screaming like these howls he was doing but it was a higher pitch there was two of them that came out we literally just jumped back on the boat and we were we had no (laughs) no protection or anything mm-hmm. so he's looking at me we got the gopro and he said hey dude should we go for a walk up the hill and i'm thinking right now in the dark we're talking <laughs> we're talking blair witch man this is gonna be a blair witch thing you like, can't oh, do oh yeah sure no yeah so I, I said you know what i thought i was brave but i'm not brave these sounds were curdling it just got right to your so we looked at each other we recorded it we said what did you hear and we, and so we had it on tape on the gopro that, uh, you know, the, the sounds we heard. So that was, that night we heard a couple more sounds, but we sat on the boat. We didn't make a peep. Next day we went back home and I was hooked from there, watching YouTube videos and things like that. So about a month ago, it, it just sparked me. I was at work and, and there was a, I always heard from an area, it's called Princeton. It's up the yeah. uh, number three highway. And there's, a lot of stories they've done a few books and everything that's one of my favorite places to kind of like as a matter of fact i put it on a um in google like gmail and stuff you can put alerts for stuff i actually put it for that kind of vancouver island area i also put it for uh princeton area um i actually have an alert for that area because it's just so dense full of stuff it is i was up there last week looking around i got an area right now that i'm sort of scouting with a, a couple of friends of ours but at work, the job I do, um, there's a couple that comes down every second week from that area. Their daughter lives in the city where I work. They come in where I work, and I know what he, he's had a, a logging operation for 30 years. And I'm thinking, 30 years in Princeton, buddy, you've probably seen a few things. So I don't want to use his name, but let's just call him Bob. He comes in one day, and I look over, I'm like, Bob, have you ever seen anything weird over your times logging in the Princeton area? And he kind of looked at me kind of strange and he said, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, things in the bush that are maybe not bears. And he kind of just shook his head and walked away. Okay, the next time they were down, his wife, his wife's pretty chatty, very nice lady. And uh, we'll call her Linda. I called her over. Linda, can I ask you something? And she said, what do you want to know? And I said, 
you guys lived in Princeton for a long time, right? And she said, yeah. I said, you know what? You guys are in the bush pretty much 24 seven with your operation. He's retired now. Okay. So they sold their operation. Have you ever seen anything weird? She goes, what do you mean, Doug? Like, you know, maybe things in the bushes that are not bears. She's saying, you're talking about Sasquatches, aren't you? I said, mm, yeah. And she, she looked at me and she turned back to me. She says, I'll tell you something. We had a guy named Joe. Joe was one of our workers. And Joe would always go up in the bush on his skitter. It was a sort of a rubber uh, mechanized machine for pulling the trees they, they mm -hmm. fell. Because the trees in that area are not like the trees we have down here. They're, yeah. they're more or less a little bit, you know, they're not as, the girth on them is as big. So he would go up there and start his operation about four in the morning. He had his high beam halogen lights on and he'd be working by himself. They always said, they always said, Joe, don't go up there and work by yourself. Well, why said, not? <laughs> exactly. So she said one day Joe's truck pulled in the yard. It was at five in the morning. So her husband goes outside because it's they're, they're, they were connected with their log and operation right in their home outside they had their machine sheds and all their equipment. So he walks, her husband walks out to the, to the vehicle. Joe's sitting in there and Joe's white as a ghost. And he's looking straight ahead. And he looks at, he looks at Bob and he says, you know, Bob, I'm never going back there. He says, what the hell happened? He says, I don't know what it was, but as soon as I, I articulated the machine over, this thing stood at me and it was like 10 feet away and it just looked me right in the eyes and it would not move. He said, I just looked at it, it looked at me, and then when I articulate the machine, it said it turned and walked and went in the bushes. And they said, they said, don't say anything to anybody about this. He said, but next time you, if you want to, if you want your job, you want to go back in there, you take somebody else with you. So he said, ever since that, Joe's never went in the bush by himself. He's always went. Mm -hmm. So when she told me this story, I just went, and she looked at me and she's dead serious. And she says, you know, Bob doesn't really like talking about this stuff. But he's had quite a few encounters. But in there, in the business, this is the problem. You start opening your mouth in small towns, you're going to have the university, you know, uh, crypt cryptologists. Yeah. They're all going to flood in this area because they all know they're waiting because they know this area has been a hotbed. There's Everybody comes out of the woodworks. And exactly. Thing you know, it's like you can't even fly fish there. Exactly. There's so. a there's a road um, in, there's a provincial park, Manning Park, East Gate of Manning Park. There's a road that goes almost to the U.S. border to the Cascades. It's, it's called Passate Road. I've heard of this road. It is just a very squatchy area. She tells me, she looks me in the eye again, she says, and I said, what about Passate Road? And she said, you know what? She said, it's funny that road has the best timber, but it's funny a lot of their operations will go in there and they don't want to go back. They just don't want to be because I've, I've had an article with a fellow that went in there who was a logger that they end up falling a tree on a juvenile. This juvenile screamed, and then before you know it, there was two alpha males up there throwing chunks of logs at the loggers. One hit one of them, one, one hit one in the head, and his foreman said, they dragged him out of there, said, you know what? They, they took him to the hospital, gave him stitches. His foreman said, you know, if you say anything, they're going to shut us down. And you need to, you need, you need to, you need this job. So I think there's a lot of that have gone on because my father was in the logging industry and he told so me. So this maybe a juvenile in the tree or below it or something might have whacked it with the limbs or something. I think that's what happened exactly. So these alpha males came out and they were looking to kick some ass, I guess, you know, basically. Oh yeah. So it seems that way. So it just stories like that. And um, three months ago I was down, I went to visit my, my, my sister lives in Santa Fe now. She's, so I went down to Santa Fe, and when I was I was telling her about something because she said to me, "Are you still into that Bigfoot stuff?" And I said, "Yeah." And she says, "You remember the story I told you?" And I said, "And I said, holy smokes!" She had an incident in the same area, Tulumi, which is up in the north part of, of Princeton, and her and her girlfriend were up there. And I don't know what it is about women that I think these things are attracted to women. It's probably a young juvenile, maybe. But they were, they were in a cabin. They went up with a, a, a friend of theirs. It was the, actually her girlfriend's boyfriend. And there was a storm coming. So when they went to the cabin, they were very low in propane. So he decided to run down to Princeton, which was about, I don't know, 
25 minute drive mm -hmm. uh, to get some propane. But wouldn't you know it? It's just like a movie. The, the bridge washes out. The bridge washes out. Two girls left in a cabin up in the mountains. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, B this movie is movie waiting to happen. <laughs> this, is the, this is the real deal. I mean, when she was telling me, I, she told me about this, but I forgot all about it. It was, it was back in 1990 or 1989, and I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. But she said, I don't know what it was, but we were in the cabin. It's raining outside. Something is open, trying to open the door. The cabin's on stilts, so it's, the cabin's already... She said three to four feet high up, up, up. There's a window and she says something's outside opening, trying to open the door and throwing itself against the door. Luckily, the cabin was built like Fort Knox. He couldn't get in. Jeez. But she's looking outside. And she's seeing something going by the window and they're terrified. They're screaming. And she sees something going around the cabin and she looks, all she can see is a head. Well, she said that that where the window was, was about seven and a half feet. So see something come up a little, and neither one of them are going to poke their head out the window. Mm -hmm. She said, you know what, could have been a bear. But she said, I don't think bears really try to open doors. Uh, yeah, and they're not seven feet tall. No, I mean, I don't think, on all yeah, fours. yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, any, any, any basketball players around Around no, the no. Wilt Chamberlain was pretty much retired by then. I'd met him once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't think that's the issue. But she says they were terrified. So, so they did this for two nights, and it came back the second night, and it was throwing rocks at the cabin, and they were terrified. They're huddled in the corner. So this, so after that, what happened was they made. There's not all. There was other people that had cabins in the area, so they managed to make somewhat of a, a temporary bridge across the river by by cutting a couple of slab, slab logs. So he came over and he looked at the cabin and they had, I guess, aluminum siding on the cabin. And he said the cabin was dented up by these, these large rocks that were hitting the cabin. And some of these were massive rocks. Mm -hmm. So they, he looked at them and said, listen, don't say anything about this because you know what? I, I really don't know what to make of it. So he went downtown and he was mentioning in, in the Princeton area what happened. And they yeah. just looked at him. And one of the, one of the guys at the, at the gas station said, listen, you shouldn't have your cabin up there. You, you're just crazy to have your cabin up. There's just too much things happening around this area. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really, uh, really active area. Because I think at one time they built the Crow's Nest Isn't Highway. The area? Oh, no, it was Yale where they found the Jack Yeah, the, Yale is, is just on the other side of the range somewhat. That yeah. runs up the canyon. But still, it's kind of, kind yeah. of there. So it's that's where they found that Jacko thing supposedly way back when. Yeah, was that, like eighteen ninety or something yeah, like that. Yeah, eighteen ninety. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. I was just looking at one of the. Um, somebody put out a picture of some like baby squatch they found dead or something like that with blood on the nest. I what was do you looking, think of that? I was looking at that a couple days ago myself. Um, for some reason it just looks, uh, just doesn't look right. It looks like somebody's really good at you know, like they should be hired by the Jim Henson company. Oh. Um, but you could still tell it was kind of not, I don't know. I'm not buying that one. I'm not going to buy that one. I, I just, mm. I just can't, um, I don't know while you're still talking, I'll, I'll ring it up here on the other, uh, yeah. thing here. And so I think later on, even with listening to something like this, when she was telling me, um, what happened to her back in the nineties, um, we got pretty, pretty interested and I have a fellow that he's got a YouTube I went out with him a couple times. We did some videos, and he's he's got some really really cool uh, tree weavings. And we're talking; these are massive branches that are kind of woven together in other trees. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you'd have to be a pretty tough fella to to weave these things. So he's caught some pretty cool stuff. And a couple pictures where they got interested in that in the Chehalis area. The Chehalis area near Harrison Lake is. Uh, very, very active, very, yeah. very active area. So I think they know uh, that the, the natives told me because uh, I was doing a delivery job years ago and I talked to a couple of the elders and he just looked at me and says, you guys don't know what we have up there. And they know more than we know. But, you know, with respect, I just looked at him and I said, you know, I, I, I imagine, right? Just imagine what you, you guys have up in, up in there. 
practice here. So, and um, you know, I bought myself a better GoPro and uh, tried to equip myself. I got some polymer plaster that I use, not just plaster, but polymer in it. So it's mm-hmm. got the it's got the plastic resin in it. So uh, same things that. The, That's what I heard. I heard people are starting to tell me they're like, don't don't use plaster or play, or play, no. or Paris. They were like, get something with some sort of was it polymer or something in it yeah it's got a polymer in it it's can you uh, get that it, like a craft store or anything like that or yeah that's that where I, I bought it a place called opus and that's what they do they they're, okay. they're basically it's it's professional modeling um clay they use because yeah it's got the, it, you now i'm trying to find that picture resin. and i can't find it anywhere yeah <laughs> uh, i've seen it it's it's pretty scary though with it has the blood on the log and everything it was yeah birth. like the nesty part of the log there it was like yeah. uh it was interesting to see, but I'm just, I'm just not there with it. So, yeah. you know, um, like, like you, I didn't, I, but you, well, you got kind of more of a, almost like a sighting more than I did. I just, you know, we found tracks and then I, I heard what I heard in the middle of the night. So, you know, I, I, the else. only thing, you know what, let me be honest with you. I haven't seen come face to face something coming out of the bushes at me, but I've, I've, I've resin tracks before I, I've heard something in the bushes when I was younger, and it was 10 feet. So it, the possibility of two bears uh, 10 feet away from each other, it almost, this, this thing had a massive um, mm-hmm. arm span. It was shaking the trees at the same time when I was up at this Hector Lake, Hector Ferguson Lake. And with this, with the, the structure, and what was, it was kind of seemed to be keeping me out because of all the branches it was putting across the trail. It was a narrow trail. It almost turned into like a horse trail, mm-hmm. which was quite, quite narrow. And with the sounds we heard, you know what, David, I go out in the bush quite a bit over the years, and there's nothing could make this sound. It was November. There was no lights in the mountains. And so yeah. this was by Kirkland Creek, just a, a, sh- a, feeder, a feeder stream, the Harrison Lake near um, Island 22. So you look, and there's an area back there. I mean, I was, the area I was in is called Mystery Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. This yeah, you ever of... notice that when they're like Mount Diablo yeah. or, you know, yeah. uh, Monster Alley or <laughs> Devil's like Mountain. Devil's Mountain. And it's yeah. just like, you know, we are Skookum Meadows. It's like, why do you even name these places that if there really wasn't some? It's kind of like, you know, like I tell people with the, you know, the Pack West Bigfoot encounter stories. These are all based on true stories. You know, I create, you know, do storytelling with right. little experiences that I get from people. Um, but it's just like that, where it's like you take something that, you know, happened to somebody and you create this this story behind it, like Native American mm-hmm. storytelling. And um, that's what they do with these places. I mean, they, they name them after something that happens, you know, whenever, you know, mm-hmm. Skookum Meadows, you know, you could do, uh, what was the other, what were some other ones? I mean, there's just all kinds. We have a ton of them in Oregon. Oh, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it in um, Oregon. Yeah. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like they're named after that for a reason. I know. There's a place called Devil Lake. We went about, uh, when was that? That was the early part of the spring. We went up to a place called Sarah Lake where another fellow that I, he, he's got his YouTube station. And he's, he's getting some pretty neat material. I must say, I contacted him and we, we got together. And we were going to a place called Sarah Lake. Well, the lake before, just prior to it is called Devil's Lake. And he said that I've had some experience at Devil Lake. And I said, of course you have with a name like that. <laughs> of course you have. So we, we headed up there. And that's behind a small town called Mission, Mission BC, which is just, it's another, they've had, matter of fact, there was actually a busload of, there was actually one of the best uh, uh, YouTube videos up there it was a place called Hoover Lake. We checked it out where it showed, um, a large Bigfoot on a small island, and he looks like he was raiding um, bird eggs because these birds were dive bombing him. Oh wow! It's Hoover Lake, and it's on it's on YouTube. It, it was a couple of students. They were, um, I think, Chinese students that were over for the summer. There was a parallel logging road next to the lake, and he must have had a great camera because you can see this thing plainly. And this, it steps from one log down. That's what. That's the kicker right there. It's because it's so there's no human that could do a step like this into this hole that this this thing did. So uh, that's just right behind Mission. We went up there. It's you know like 10, 15 minutes away from the town. So it's 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 a very very active area. Yeah. I'm not sure if these things are migratory. You might go there sometimes. You might not find nothing. You know it. Uh, 
we never really had a cold winter. It doesn't really snow a lot around here. A little mm-hmm. farther up, it'll, it'll snow. But, uh, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's a lot of things, but it's, it's who to talk to. You know, you, you got to be... It uh, is, it is. You know, whenever I first started this whole thing back in November, I just wrote up, you know, a couple little backstories to, you know, my mother's event, um, right. finding tracks, and then... Uh, Mine, I just did what I knew. It was kind of like just more like a really extended long report. Um, but then my, you know, a couple friends of mine had some experiences, one of them had a visual. So I just kind of created the backstory around the four or five paragraphs or explanation they gave me, create the stories around them. Next thing you know, it was just people out of the woodworks, just like, dude, I love this, dude, that, that, I know what they're talking about. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. here are the interviews and everything else. And it was just, you know, I mean, it was, it just kind of skyrocketed. It was pretty interesting, you know, yeah. to, to meet with everybody. So, yeah, but, um, gosh, that's interesting, man. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty, uh, so you still live around up in that area or? Yeah, you... I, I live in a town called White Rock. It's right by the U.S. Yeah. border now. It's yeah, just I know that's that. from, yeah, it's right by Blaine. I moved there. There's nothing here. It's your typical live by the ocean. Town. Blaine, Blaine, Blaine. Blaine, Washington. Um, I think I have an email. <sighs> when I ask for like little experiences or encounters to create this, the base on true stories around, mm-hmm. I think I got something from Blaine. I'm not sure. I'd have to go double check, but I think mm-hmm. it's one of the ones that I saved. Yeah, because I end up with like you know two, three hundred of them, and then I sift through and I grab like fifty to a hundred of them because that's all I can write in a year. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> understand. Just like, I understand. I um, understand. Yeah, so I'll have to check in there and see if there's anything in there from the Blaine area. So the area where I live is really nothing. It's I I have to jump in my jeep and drive another you know hour out where I used to live and go farther out where I lived where I was a kid, and from there on it's you know finding different areas. But I'm very interested with this Princeton here, which is. It's like a three to four hour drive, but to me, I do a lot of hiking in the area. I was just there camping with the family in the provincial park, and I got scared out of the mountains in Jasper and Lake Louise in the Rocky Mountains because the fires, we're having some terrible fires up here. So with these Grab a little running, recorder, drop it off, you know, at night, bring it back, load it up, get a little SoundCloud account for like seven bucks a month, put it on mm. there, let people listen. That's what I'm planning on doing with this the weekend, mm. uh, next week, not this weekend, but next week. And it's a little $20 thing. And we've, mm-hmm. you know, here in Southern Oregon, where I live in the Douglas County area, there's lots of different things up around the Glide area, out around, uh, um, down on the uh, very, you know, uh, southerly part of uh, the river out here. Um, uh, so I'm, you know, we have the Cow Creek Indians here up at Myr- Myrtle Creek that have mm-hmm. spoken about this thing for a long time. And I get people that actually hear stuff up around the Myrtle Creek mountain areas. Um, so I'm going to start leaving this thing out. I'm going to load it up. I'm going to share it on the Facebook page before I even listen to it. Everybody else will get a chance to listen to it at the same time as well. Yeah, you're probably right. I've never, I just got some thumb cameras. 20 bucks, and- man. Amazon. Bam. Wow. <laughs> I even thought about it's a parabolic. Good enough. It's good enough to just yeah. listen to and, and pick up something. Uh, I'll probably buy something a little bit more spendy later on down the road. But for now, I just wanted to kind of test things out on my own and do some things real quick and get used to it first. So. Yeah, I think there's some of the areas because I work with a fellow right now. And yeah. We have time off. We're always going in the bush and just checking. You know, we're a couple of just, you know, novices like yeah. most people are. We're having fun. We're having fun and we we believe, but we're not, we're not trying to, to – get you carried away. This is just our personal little hobby. You yeah. Know, some people are just so Jones that they're just so into it. I mean, uh, Oh yeah. No, I, I guess some of those people sometimes they try to comment on his stories. I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I ain't the BFRO. I'm not a scientist yeah. here. I'm not going to go in here and back check and fact check all this stuff in here. Yeah, I was like, whoa, exactly. whoa, this is, this is kind of, I was like, if you want the, the fact checking stuff and get in there and listen to the interviews, if you want some awesome encounter stories sitting around the campfire, ha- hanging out at the house with coffee in hand and nothing else to do, listen in. Listen yeah. into a good and, you know, based on, you know, true story. Um, that's what I do. The interviews here, like with you and, and others, um, this is another way for the, you know, people to kind of vent, you know, everything that they know and they've experienced. And this is where, you know, the fact finding stuff comes in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is where I do that kind of 
uh, thing. So hmm. yeah, know. I have nothing. I have nothing to gain from this. If anything, I'll probably get ridiculed in that, but I don't really care. I mean, I know what I've seen. I know what other people I've who are are pretty solid have seen. I mean, I've talked to people who you know, and even some uh, police and military have seen things. And they kind of look at me and they say, you know, don't really say too much about it, but this is what I've seen. And these are solid individuals. Mm -hmm. they have, if anything, they have to lose is their career. So yeah. me, it's, you know, it's my weekend passion. I got a couple of friends where we, uh, you know, we have families. This is what we do on the side. We have fun. We're, you know, slowly, I'd love to get a FLIR a small FLIR image camera, maybe a parabolic. Um, you know, FLIR cameras and doing the video thing, I've never really been too big of a fan of that because, I mean, that's you're covering, you know, 100 feet of, of vast, massive forest. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like going in and saying, okay, well, I'm going to get a picture of, you know, I'm going to get some footage of, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm using these are isolated when you're when you're out <laughs> at when you're, when you're out at night, okay, and you see something at a campsite that's moving in the bushes. That's when oh yeah, yeah. That's, I'm not going to sit you... and pan the whole force, dude. We got way way too much. No, too much just leaving it in one spot and then trying to like put yeah. up pheromones and whatever. It's like you're going to attract know. everything. It's no. like. We got the yeah. Olympic Peninsula guys down, uh, down, just down for me. They're they're the ones that are into the, the, but recorders, the whole DNA. Uh, vocal recorders. This little thing has a little tiny uh, light that beeps on it, but I can cover that with a piece of tape. And the next thing, this is black, man. It's sil silver to it, but it's black. I can put this under, put some pine needles over it, shove it up against a tree, and this thing will listen to. This will pick up everything all night. Cool. I think we can get better. I think the best evidence out here so far, for the most part, has been taken by this and footprints. Mm -hmm. um, this has been a wonderful little tiny medium and tool for picking up evidence. Even if you guys are listening, if you, those of you that are listening to this, take one of these out. If you think that there might be something around the hillsides and mountains in your area, take that little 20 minute drive up the road, head up onto a logging road or something, stick a little thing like this for $20. You can probably get them for 10 bucks at Walmart. Grab one, go stick it up there and play it back the next day and, and, and test it out on the weekends and see what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to be sticking one at one time. I'm going to go up to a place called Skeeter camp here where a guy actually has a picture of a Bigfoot that he took mm -hmm. with a smartphone real fast wow. and I'll be having him on. He lives near me and I'll be having him on an interview here pretty soon. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome. But, uh, last 10 or 15 minutes here. Um, creepiest, craziest experience or encounter you ever heard of in your area. Oh, <sighs> you like so many <laughs> yeah where do you start where do you start from the ones you hear about and you've heard i think some of the ones on youtube i've been watching are just utterly scary i was listening to one this morning but you know i mean some of these aggressive now i'm i i think it's interesting with listening to william jebning and he's talking about the four classes which is i've never heard before and i'm starting to understand now i am a very good friend of william jevening's i run his website i work everything for him as a matter of fact i was just on the phone with him the day before yesterday very cool guy now me and him um we have one disagreement i believe there's two types he believes there's four right. i believe there's skunk ape and then there's patty basically what about this yeah. dogman? they're even maybe thinking that maybe the dogman could be maybe a class i'm three. still not sold on the dogman um, yeah, I don't, you know, but, uh, but it does make sense. It could be. If, if, I, I go say, back five or six years rate. ago. I go back five or six years ago, even online, and you don't really see anything about that. Mm. But the last two years, all of a sudden, ch -ch -ch -ch, starts yeah. growing, growing, growing out of like nowhere because that's how the internet is today. You yeah. just, I uh, trust me, I'm a lifestyle business entrepreneur and owner, so right. you know things can just kind of all of mushroom. a sudden just appear and they mushroom. Um, so I'm not really sold on it. Um, you know, sometimes. I'm not going to say no, but what I am going to say is this. So far, there's more evidence towards Bigfoot in the first place, more evidence collected and everything else. Not to mention, um, for me, sometimes I feel like someone just one day was like, oh, the Bigfoot world is so saturated that I'm going to find something else to do. And Dogman popped into their head. So I'm not really sure. I'm not going to really say no, but I'm not going to say yes either. What I'm going to say right now is that I'm unconvinced of it at this point. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not convinced about it. Yeah. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, however, those are the things that we hear from Native Americans throughout uh, their history. Yeah. You know, we can hear things like, you know, shape shifting into wolves and stuff like that. And that's fine. You can save that for Hollywood movies or Native American stories, whatever. But it doesn't mean that there's a dog man out there right now running around. I mean, to me, that's just somebody took the werewolf and ran with it. We don't have any of these stories, of these dogmen around this here, and I don't think you do. No, you You're don't. Here. This is, seems to be a, a, a southwest. And you, live, and you live even closer to the land bridge, where possible Bigfoot, Sasquatch, kind of moved into this area. You know, mm. thousand or two thousand years ago, just kind of made that move, and then the land bridge kind of you know evaporated. You know, after the flood and everything, mm. everything just kind of you know. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm like you. I mean, I've, you don't really hear about that, but mm-hmm. you hear a lot about, you know, you know, Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Yeah. So, um, you know, nostril snouts on it and everything else. I don't know. Um, I didn't see that on the Patty film, and I do believe that the Patty film is pretty much 100% positive proof that that's a Sasquatch. Yeah. Nobody's been able to disprove it. People have only been able to sit there and go, well, that's pretty darn yeah. <laughs> they're like we can't refute this no i think it's still it's still quite amazing that that film is that old and we haven't really had anything that can rival that other than being very controversial because with all the animation they have these days we see things walking across the road, turning around. And they say, "Okay." That's oh yeah, twelve-year-old can get the studio stuff that I have on here and put together something looks absolutely cool, pretty close to being real, like a little baby Sasquatch dead in a nest. Mm. You know, anybody can put that stuff together. To them. it's pretty simple. You yeah, know, so good. for me, it's like that's why it, it, it just makes the the problem is it makes everything a little bit more skeptical. Mm-hmm. Makes you a little bit more skeptical about the evidence that we find. But you can't really go wrong with certain things. Recorded evidence, you can hear knocks. Now, it might be somebody out there doing the knocking. It might be somebody doing the screaming. But for some reason, when you're really listening to something and you hear some whistle or some yell or some scream or some grunt, you 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 know. You know from what you have heard in your life, okay, what something could be, that, it, that it's not human. You just know. <laughs> so, you know. That's that's just kind of my take on that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, yeah, thanks for sharing that with us, man. That was a logging story. That one up there with that guy just standing there 10 feet away from him staring. I couldn't he imagine that. Terrified. Did he explain what it looked like or describe what it looked like or anything like that? Um, I don't think he really went into detail with Bob about it. He just said the thing was about seven to eight, eight foot. Stood there, looked at him, blinked. It was just glass eyed at first they were just looking at each other and it, it blinked before he did and it was pretty hairy so it was it seemed to be kind of wet so it was like a the, the hair was apparently quite it was long but it was quite wet it was matted it was kind of matted well what happened was, a, you, it's like a rainforest here in the pacific yeah. northwest so it's probably just dew it's a little dry rock in this you're... area okay this area is kind of semi-desert like okay. the, the area of the of Princeton is a little bit more arid. It's called the Silkamine, which is drier than the lower mainland where I live. Lower kind of like the Klamath Falls area just east of exactly. Lake and all that. Just like Shasta area, like north of Shasta, yeah. Klamath Falls. And that Basically, area. it's like real what they call a high, um, what is it, high desert almost, where it's like not desert, but it's just – it's vast landscape with patches of forest here and there, but for the most part, it's just rolling exactly. flat lands. And, yeah. Though when you do get into the higher elevations, it cools down, so the trees are, are, are yes. a lot more thicker. So it was a wet, a wet morning. So it, he just, and I think he was, he was petrified. He just stood there and looked at this thing, and it looked at him. They glanced for each other. Probably the stare. Seemed like an hour, but it was only probably less than you know twenty thirty seconds. And then it's he said when it it turned, it turned with its hip. Mm. He, and when it turned around, and he said, and then it, it so when it's walking away, it's walking with one step in front of each other. So its hips are kind of. Yeah, he he mentioned it's, that too. Yeah, it's a weird walk. It's got that kind of 
like the the knees and stuff kind of kind of roll almost they they move like that in the hip as well so it's yeah. like a because Bob, I mean, obviously Bob didn't tell me about it because I've never really talked to him about this. His wife, his wife Linda, is just more prone to open up. But she, but she said to me, just keep it with you, you know, yeah, with with yourself. Don't really share too much. That's why I'm using different names. But mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to listen to this, so it's not a big deal. But I'm just trying to be. I'm trying to tell you what she told me, and when she looked at me like this, this lady's. She's not telling stories. <laughs> she was terrified. She talked to she talked to you Bob after this, or Joe, sorry, and uh, he was terrified. This is a big guy, a big logger guy. Been in the bush all his life. Nothing scared him. No bear scared him. And to see this, he was terrified. He wouldn't go back in the bush. It took him a while. Then he did. He he he, he would go in with another fellow. He wouldn't work by himself. Yeah. So it changed his life. It really changed his life the way he thought about the woods. I never, I've never been back actually up to the uh, Elderberry Flats area since my experience. I just, uh, I might one day yeah. drop a recorder off one evening and leave quickly. I just, after that incident, just thinking about going back there is just after the incident that night, we crawled into the car after that and locked the doors for a couple hours till the sun came up. Um, it was just weird. I was just weirded out then. I was just done. I was like, I'm not coming here ever again. Even at a, a footnote, you know, a guy I worked with was a hunter. He went across the other side of Harrison Lake. This happened five years ago. And, and we were, the reason is we went up with my friend to Harrison Lake. We weren't even going to Mystery Valley. We were actually going to cross the lake and go over to uh, Bear Creek. But the water was pretty choppy. This was in November. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go into Mystery Valley. But because of the experience that he had, this fellow that I worked with at work, he was hunting up in the area about five years ago with his brother and a friend. They both had, they were all fully loaded with, with, with uh, weapons. They're in, a, they're in a camp and something is screaming at him, throwing large rocks. He said, these rocks were big and they're flying into the camp. They were so terrified. His brother had a couple of shots. He shot a couple of warning shots. They all three full grown big men piled into a, a one-seater pickup <laughs> truck with their rifles, and they wouldn't go back outside. He said, "He said to me, no way. We three of us were all in there. We're all six foot two, six foot three, two hundred and some pounds, crammed in this little truck for like seven hours till the sun came up, and we're not going back out there. And this thing's pitching huge rocks at them, and they're Jeez. they were terrified. So this is the area we were heading to, but we never made it because of the choppy, the choppy water. This is a fairly side. It's a big yeah." A big yep. lake. So that's why we decided. He looks at me and he said, My friend says, How about we go to Mystery Valley? I'm like, Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> it's gotta be something there. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, with so, that, okay. we'll wrap this up. Go ahead and hang on here, though. Okay, but uh, thank you guys very much for being on this interview. We've got some more interviews coming up for you, too, um, over the next week and a half that I'll share with you guys. But um just want to say thank you, Doug, for just sharing all of that. Uh, that's just awesome, man. That whole Joe thing is just freaky. I can imagine just standing there. It's like, <gasps> you know, somebody, uh, one lady was telling me, it was kind of like when you see something like this, it's like she said, or like William Jefferson says, you just, you just, you don't have any reference for it. It's like she said, it's kind of like picturing a color you've never seen. And to me, I was like, that's interesting. And she actually got that from a Christian tune from a Christian artist, which was funny. I was like, I've heard that somewhere before. She said, it's just like, it's like, it's like seeing a color that you've never seen before. And she's all, try to picture that in your mind. Because that's what you're trying to go through when you're staring at something like this. That's what your brain's doing, except for this is big, bad, and ugly. And it's very scary. And so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, are they out there, you know, do they hunt us down? No. <laughs> Is it a wild animal? Yes. So, and you've got to worry about that. So instincts are instincts. That's just what happens. So with that, guys, hang on there, Doug. Thank you very much. God bless you guys for being on here. And I will see you on the next interview or encounter story.